Fellow Southern Cameroonians, today is the 24th day of the month of May in the year of our Lord 2019. I bring you revolutionary greetings. Today I'm bringing you this very important press release from the SCLC. And uh, after that press release, we'll have a little two to three minutes discussion before I go. So let me bring you the content of this press release. Don't mind. I'm going to have some little spate of uh, ecstasy during the presentation of this release because, uh, as you all know, La République du Cameroon has become a very lovable state that uh, sometimes presenting issues concerning that country <laughs> cannot but, uh, you know, leave you reeling with laughter because these people have transformed human life and the art of governance into a simple joke into some piece of drama. But the unfortunate thing is that with respect to the situation of the people of the Southern Cameroons, it gets tragic. Here's the content of this press release signed Washington, May 24, 2019. Dictator Paul Bia's professional, this professional is in parenthesis, soldiers caught flagrante delito. Cameroon's communication minister, René Emmanuel Sadi, published a release Wednesday, May 22, 2019, in which he tried unconvincingly to fool the world that a toddler killed by Paul Bia's soldiers at point blank rather died at the hands of Southern Cameroon self-defense volunteers. That was in Moyoka. The belated attempt by a well-known baby-killing regime to throw away responsibility for the heinous crime on others merely exposes the inability of a system that has survived on manipulations for decades to tell a lie. Eyewitness accounts in Moyuka have revealed authoritatively that after the visit of genocide enabler in chief, John Gute, the rampant soldiers set out to wreak havoc in the region. After killing the toddler, the family and witnesses insist no authority, no authority ever visited to inquire about the diseased baby. How then did the government recover the bullet that killed this toddler to ascertain that it was not the same type used by their soldiers? This attempt at denial by Yaoundé is simply a pattern. One would have expected that all self-defense volunteers who dropped their weapons and moved to the centers created by the Disarmament, Demobilization and Reintegration Commission out of harm's way. <laughs> it is also strange to hear that faced with an attack, the parents of this toddler hurriedly carried everyone away, leaving behind a four-month-old baby. When Bia soldiers were caught on camera shooting dead a mother with a baby strapped to her back, it was denial onto Human Rights Watch and other rights organizations used forensic evidence to bring them to order to finally accept it. On May 15, 2019, again after genocide enabler in chief John Gute left Bamenda, the soldiers ran wild and burned down some 200 houses in a large Omancon, killing three people alone. Although some victims who spoke to the BBC revealed that they were at home and pleaded with the soldiers to spare their homes, exposing their pathetic situations like the widow who presented her late husband's grave in evidence, the professional, the professional inverted commas, soldiers raised down the homes Caught so glaringly in the act, the Minister of Defense, Betia Samo, blamed the act on confusion. He blamed the burning to ashes of 200 homes, at least, on confusion. He blamed the killing of three people, among them a carpenter who was dragged out of his house and killed on confusion. In 2018, a soldier raped a young breastfeeding mother around veterinary junction in Bermenda 
in broad daylight. When the alarm got so loud, the Minister of Defense coyly ordered the arrest of the rapist soldier, promising to enforce justice. Several months after, the LCLC has learned that the said soldier had long been redeployed elsewhere and has most certainly been abusing other women with impunity. The LCLC seizes this opportunity to remind international public opinion that what the world is seeing today is only a fraction of what the people of Southern Cameroons have been subjected to for over five decades in total obscurity. Crimes worse than these were committed during the over 90 days of internet blackout in early 2017 all over Southern Cameroons and during a state of emergency declared in the Northwest in 1992 after Mr. John Frundi was robbed of his victory at the presidential election that year. This is ample evidence to support the stance of over 95% of the population of Southern Cameroons that the two Cameroons go their separate ways. The LCLC is a coalition of movements, groups and organizations seeking the independence of the former UN Trust Territory of British Southern Cameroons. This release is signed by Elvis Cometa for the SCNC, Ebenezer Akwanga, the APLM, John Bakuro, the Consortium, Bo Herbert, Morisk, Sako, Samuel Ikome, Interim Government, Salili Likowo, FSCWO, and Mark Chep's Republic of Ambazonia Nationals. My dear people of Southern Cameroons, this is outrageous to say the least, that this evil government of Mr. Paul Bia says that the woman, the mother of the baby, Madame Agbo, Emilia, was forced at gunpoint to confess on camera that her toddler was killed by the army of the Republic of Cameroon, claimed that the same Amber boys who shot the baby dead got her to confess on camera that it was the army. But at the same time, that Minister of Communication says when the attackers came, the, the, the woman, her husband, and other children, well, they had four children, all escaped, leaving behind the toddler. So after they killed the baby, they managed to get the woman, wouldn't kill her, but forced her to say on camera that her toddler was killed by, Amber, by the Army of La Republic. This is a simple show of the fact that the government of La Republic has got to total insanity. Of course, we all saw Mr. Paul Beer on the 20th of May at the Unity Palace, unable to lift up even his own hands to wave to the people. He took the assistance of his wife Chantal Beer, ailing herself, to lift up his hands and tell him that, no, it is time to wave. This diaper wearing octogenarian who has determined that he wants to die with millions of Southern Cameroonians will have to understand that the people of the Southern Cameroons are determined that the two Cameroons go their separate ways and nothing by any means is going to stop this from happening. And now I take you back to some information I brought here in the last recording. And this is about our ongoing fundraising campaign. My dear people, I must congratulate a good lot of our people who are responding to the call for funds. Like I told you, this is one of the most delicate moments in our struggle. If you don't take note, all our sacrifices could go in vain. Because this is actually when this struggle can be sold and bought across the counter. But we have asked you to do what you need to do to help us ensure that our negotiators eventually will go to the negotiation table strong, psychologically healthy, full and loaded of determination and knowing that they are seriously backed. This will happen only with money. 
This will happen only when we are able to do what you do when you want to have a strong diplomacy. I know you don't want me to be too explicit here on a lot of things. At this point in time, I told you we will talk a lot in riddles. My dear people, those of you who are yet to contribute, make no mistake, this is the time to put in that money. We need it now more than we've ever needed it before. I know that there are some of you out there who like to contribute to this struggle, but who will not want anyone to identify that you contributed. I gave you some telephone numbers the last time. I gave you my personal telephone number sometime, but I'm going to give you some other telephone numbers now. Call us and we will help you to do the rest. Take note that there is no excuse we will give to the next generation if we fail to do now what we are supposed to do. Don't be part of the problem. I know that a lot of you will say you have contributed money and it was mismanaged. Now should we abandon the struggle? Leave it here. Forget about all what we have sacrificed this far simply because we have already lost money. Take note, efforts are going on in the background a lot to make sure anyone who mismanaged any dollar, any franc, any pound, any euro, any yen will pay back. But right now, we have already put in place measures, put in place a lot of safeguards to ensure that no money that is being contributed from now onward will be mismanaged. For that reason, my dear brothers and sisters, rise to the occasion. Rise to the occasion. Rise to the occasion. Don't say tomorrow that why did I miss that opportunity? We have no time left on our plate. Every single day that is passing now is very monumental in the struggle. And now, let me end quickly because I don't intend us to get even up to 12 minutes where we are now. When this communication, let me give you these telephone numbers again. Get to us through these numbers. If you have difficulties sending in your contributions, the website of the Ambazonia Relief Fund will be ready in the days ahead. And at the same time, you'll be able to have the opportunity to contribute in several ways without any problem. So when you watch this video also, go to the comment section. The first message that you see at top will be all the banking credentials for the Ambazonia Relief Fund. But if you are still unable to get that message, call any of these numbers. You are calling out of the United States of America. I'll put the plus one ahead. Call plus one eight zero four five nine three nine zero seven eight. Plus one eight zero four five nine three nine zero seven eight. Or call plus one three zero one eight nine eight six three two four. Call plus one three zero one. 8986324 or you can also call plus one four four three nine eight five three four two zero. God is with us.